The Russian Federation has a supply of tanks and combat vehicles only until mid-2025, according to Forbes, the publication reports that in military terms for the Russian Federation, 2024 is the last significant opportunity to achieve success. However, Ukraine is actively working to solve its problems and significant progress is expected by 2025. The material, citing an Estonian military analyst, states that after the adoption of the mobilization law, it is expected that by the end of 2024, improvements on all fronts will gradually unfold at all levels. AS drones became the main threats to tanks in Ukraine in the months following Russia's wider invasion of the country starting in February 2022, the Russians and later, the Ukrainians borrowed a method from combatants in Syria and began welding crude metal roofs and cages onto their tanks, and improvisation doesn't apply only to armor. The Russian and Ukrainian militaries are also attaching different combinations of radio jammers and antennae to various vehicles in the hope of immobilizing incoming drones. Some of these jammers are bizarre, but that doesn't mean they can't work, the Russians and Ukrainians are also creating entirely new vehicle types by mixing and matching spare chassis and weapons, again responding to battlefield conditions until the responses become standard practice, Russian casualties in Ukraine have surpassed 450,000 since February 2022, according to figures published by Ukraine's military. Casualty counts are murky in war, and neither Moscow nor Kiev is keen to offer up estimates on its own losses, Western estimates of Russian losses come in lower than Ukraine's count. The UK government said on March 3 that from February 2022 to early March 2024, total Russian casualties, killed and wounded, stood at 355,000. Missiles, drones, shells and tanks. Russia is facing serious production difficulties. The military-industrial complex of the Russian Federation is not capable of producing such a quantity of weapons that would allow the occupiers to seize Ukrainian territories. However, Moscow took up the task of cleaning out tank and ammunition depots. Welt publication writes about this. As for drones, Russia is increasing production of Shahed-136 attack drones. At the same time, Moscow cannot increase missile production volumes due to the presence of Western components there. If we take a closer look at the four key areas of arms, the situation is much less rosy, and at the same time, far from the hopes of the Ukrainians and their Western partners, the publication writes. According to Oryx portal analysts, the Russian army has already lost 8,400 armored vehicles in Ukraine. This number includes 2.9 thousand tanks and 5.5 thousand armored personnel carriers. In total, before the full-scale invasion, the Russians had about 10,000 units of this type. As of the beginning of 2024, it became known from satellite images that the Russian Federation has another 40% of tanks at its training grounds. They will be restored and sent to the front in Ukraine. The pace is estimated at up to 1,600 units per year. Also, the Russians can produce up to 200 armored vehicles per year. According to calculations by Johann Michel and Michael Gerstad from the British International Institute for Strategic Studies, stocks of old equipment in the Russian Federation will decrease to zero within two to three years. The main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine stated that the Russian Federation can produce about 230 units of certain types of missiles per month. 130 of them have a range of more than 350 kilometers, another 100 have a shorter range. Recently, the Russian Minister of Industry stated that in 2025, the Russian Federation intends to produce 5,000 attack drones of the Shahed-136 type. Their occupiers use them daily to attack Ukrainian cities. At the same time, the overall target for drone production that year is 11,000 units. On average, in 2023, the Russians released eight drones per day across Ukraine. In 2024, Russian industry is capable of producing 2.1 million shells. Welt notes that Moscow can also count on Soviet reserves as well as supplies from its partners. The main suppliers are Belarus and North Korea. Moscow says Biden linked Ukrainian firm connected to terror attacks in Russia. White House responds. Washington has insisted there was no reason to search for any other potential suspects besides Islamic State after Moscow said it was looking at certain Western companies and government officials as part of an investigation into the funding of a string of terrorist attacks in Russia. The Russian Investigative Committee has established that the funds flowing through commercial organizations, including the oil and gas conglomerate Burisma Holdings, operating in Ukraine, have been used in recent years to carry out terrorist attacks in Russia. Spokeswoman Svetlana Petrenko said, Besides last month's Kroker City Hall attack, 
The investigation is looking at other terrorist acts, including the assassinations of prominent public figures and the bombing of the Nord Stream gas pipelines. Speaking to journalists, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan focused on reinforcing Washington's narrative on the Crocus attack while dismissing any other potential leads and other incidents. It's nonsense, Jake Sullivan stated. Russia knows it was Islamic State who committed the attack in Moscow. We know it was Islamic State who committed the attack in Moscow. He warned Russia of an impending terrorist attack in Moscow and all the rest of this is noise. Russia launched a probe into allegations that Ukraine and its Western backers are involved in terrorist activities on Russian soil after a referral by several lawmakers in the wake of the March 22 attack. The investigation has allegedly established that at least some of the terrorist funding had been funneled through Ukrainian companies, including the notorious Burisma Holdings, former employers of US President Joe Biden's son, Hunter. Washington issued a public warning about an imminent attack in Russia in early March, weeks before the Crocus City assault. The US refuses to allow any discussion of potential Ukrainian involvement in last month's terrorist attack near Moscow because Washington is ultimately accountable for Kiev's actions. The secretary of the Russian Security Council, Nikolai Patrushev, said last week.